morning, everyone. Our opening hymn on this great feast of the Trinity is all three verses of 94. Abba, Father, you are the pot. Thank you, my 
You sent your word to bring us truth and your spirit to make us holy. Through them we come to know the mystery of your life. Help us to worship you, one God in three persons, by proclaiming and living our faith in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Put this question to the ages that are past, that went before you, from the time God created man on earth. Was there ever a word so majestic from one of heaven to the other? Was anything ever heard? Did ever a people hear the voice of the living God speaking from the heart of the fire as you heard it and remain alive? Has any God ventured to take to himself one nation from the midst of another by ordeals, signs, wonders, war with mighty hand and outstretched arm, by fearsome terrors? All this that the Lord your God did for you before your eyes in Egypt. Understand this today, therefore, and take it to heart. The Lord is God indeed, in heaven above as on earth beneath, he and no other. Keep his laws and commandments as I give them to you today, so that you and your children may prosper and live <coughs> long in the land that the Lord your God gives you forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Happy the people the Lord has chosen as his own. Happy the people the Lord has chosen as his own. The word of the Lord is faithful, and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right, and fills the earth with his love. Happy the people the Lord has chosen as his own. By his word the heavens were made, by the breath of his mouth all the stars. He spoke, and they came to be. He commanded, they sprang into being. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. The Lord is our help and our shield. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. I pray for the people of the Lord has chosen us to A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Everyone moved by the Spirit is the Son of God. The Spirit you received is not the Spirit of slaves bringing fear into your lives again. It is the Spirit of sons, and it makes us cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself and our spirit bear united witness that we are children of God. And if we are children, we are heirs as well, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, sharing his sufferings so as to share his glory. The word of the Lord. Amen. The gospel of the nation. <laughs> Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the God of Jesus.
disciples set out for Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet them. When they saw him, they fell down before him, though some hesitated. Jesus came up and spoke to them. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to observe all the commands I give you. And know that I am with you always. Yes, to the end of time. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. I might have told you in the past what to us is just a title the Feast of the Holy Trinity we celebrate it every year it comes and goes but in the 300s AD it was such a live issue that lives were lost there were riots in Alexandria man, there were always riots in Alexandria about whether you believe that God the Father was equal to the Son and on earth the Holy Spirit was people were pushed into the docks had the throat slit if you came up the wrong answer. Well, I believe the son is inferior to the father because he's younger than the father. Oh, you do, do you? Slit. Later on, at the great council in Nicaea in the 320s, the whole subject came up again, and the bishops of the world got together to thrash this out. Is the son equal to the father? Some people were saying Jesus was just an appearance he didn't really suffer on the cross. He wasn't really a man. He was just a kind of, what would we say, an <laughs> avatar. There's the up-to-date word. When it was settled at the council, there were fist fights at the council between the bishops. Broken noses, blood flowing everywhere. Happy days, that didn't happen at the Vatican Council too in the 60s. But that's how live this issue was. Because the heart of it, strange to hear, was the dignity of the human body. You see, in ancient Rome, people and life were of not much value whatsoever. <coughs> there are stories of slaves being strangled just because they came to the table with the meal cold from the kitchen. They dawdled too much, strangle him, get rid. A human being wasn't valued much. The body, well, you've all heard of the great orgies and parties the Romans got up to, because they didn't, they didn't estimate the body itself as anything worth or dignity. When Christ, God himself, became one of us, the whole point is the human body itself, because he had one, was raised up to an immense dignity. Before our Lord's time, this was not so. This was not so at all. The great philosophers in Greece and Rome thought the body was just, well, a rather disgusting case. A container for the really important bit, the soul. Oh, the soul is immortal. The soul will live forever. We still have a bit of that hanging on in the Catholic tradition. But the point is that the human race is body and soul, without any gaps between the words, without any punctuation between the words. Body and soul, soul and body. Not to be distinguished between the two. By God himself remaining God, but becoming fully human, as you or I am, the human body itself has this great dignity. And that's why we insist on the strange phrase later on in the creed, the resurrection of the body. We don't quite know what that means. <coughs> but they didn't know quite what it meant when they saw the Lord himself after being clearly dead on the cross, being alive again. But this body, although it was him and it was a body, it could eat, they could touch this body. The same, but different. Different. It came and went. They couldn't recognize him sometimes on the road. It was the resurrected body. And it's the resurrected body, do you see, that we receive 
in Holy Communion. The same but very different. Not to be recognised with his face and his beard, but really, truly, him resurrected. The promises, our bodies, have this immense dignity as well. That's why we have to look after our bodies and each other's bodies. Not just in terms of health, but in terms also of things like taking drugs, doing things we shouldn't, and all the rest of it. They all come because of this immense dignity. God became one of us, so that those church fathers in the 320s AD could say, so that we could be like him. And stand now to proclaim our faith. I believe in God and God. Ask our Lady Queen of Peace to pray with us and for us. Hail Mary, the Lord of the Come the little horrors. Come on, kids. Come on, Arthur. Oh, I like the jacket. And I like the boots. You're looking pretty sharp today. Let's do something about that, shall we? <laughs> Thank 
talking about? Lani, Olivia? The sign of the cross? And what have you been doing? Have you making the sign? Come on, show us how you can make the sign of the cross. You say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Guess what we've been talking about? We've been talking about fights and murders that happened nearly 2,000 years ago because of what people thought about Jesus and what they didn't think about Jesus. So let's see what you've been coloring in. Oh, that's pretty. I can see children pushing swings. I play with each other. I can see one little girl helping a little boy with a sore foot. I hear one little boy here have a sore foot from playing footy. Mm. <clears throat> and another one where kids playing together nicely with jigsaws. And is that the message we have? That you should play with each other, help each other, cheer each other up when you're sad, give poor old priests lots of money when you have some of your own. Yeah. Take poor old priests on holiday with you so we can have a good time. All that kind of thing. Well, perhaps not. Perhaps not. That's wonderful. Let's hear it for the kids, everyone. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water, the wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you. In humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my many iniquities. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord our God, make these gifts holy, and through them make us a perfect offering to you. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And Lift up your hearts. Lift Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. We joyfully proclaim our faith in the mystery of your Godhead. You have revealed your glory as the glory also of your Son and of the Holy Spirit. Be persons equal in majesty undivided in splendour, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your everlasting glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory as we join with one voice. <laughs> Thank you. 
you love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And so, most loving and holy Father, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine. That they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. <coughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more he gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. Claim the mystery of faith. Guide me, Lord. And so, most loving and holy Father, as we celebrate this memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of resurrection, and whom you seated at your right hand. Proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son whose body and blood we have dominion. And so, having called us to a table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Malcolm our Bishop, and all your priestly people, we walk your ways with faith and hope, and we strive to bring joy and trust in the world. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, all the dead whose faith you alone knew. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Paul of the Cross and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ your Son. To him with him in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
And so we have his encouragement to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day so that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your children. And grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Give each other a sign. takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called for the supper of the Lamb.
God, we worship you, a trinity of persons, one eternal God. May our faith and the sacrament we receive bring us health of mind and body. We ask this for Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you all. May Almighty God bless and protect you now and always. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Our final hymn is verses. Is, uh, what's our final hymn, Tony? I will be with you. Right, number 379. <coughs> Thank you.